All right, everyone, you'll be surprised to hear that, you know, tonight there are more riots going on in multiple U.S. cities. It's a surprise, surprise. I'm sure that everyone thought that things would magically calm down. Um, this time, mainly in Seattle at the moment, like literally in the last hour, we're getting, you know, more spicy reports from Seattle. Um, this is probably partially due to the fact that the political structure there again refuses to do anything about the situation. We see that in Portland and Chicago as well, less in Louisville. They're, they're actually acting down there, especially now that live fire was shot at police. Um, most of the time, though, you get Antifa moving in, uh, BLM and, and similar Marxist groups and, and causing problems. The mayors, and in some cases the governors in the, these states, have held back on doing anything to the point where that they're paying off like that literal pimp, the, the ex-con for $150,000 to provide alternatives to policing. Again, the best alternative to policing is to repeal all gun control, institute castle doctrine, and stand your ground and watch as the native population takes care of the problem. You know, when the perp is dead, you don't have to put him in a cell. It costs a lot less, too. It's a wonderful thing. I can't wait until we, later today we hear which pro-gunner Trump is going to stack onto SCOTUS. And then we, then we can hopefully proceed with federal court challenges uh, to various uh, unconstitutional gun laws and, and get them to SCOTUS finally in a bunch of five or six to fours. Um, that's my goal for the next ten years is to chuckle as that happens, and thankfully it's now fairly likely. Uh, but these are mostly peaceful riots. Keep in mind, when somebody with a hammer and sickle armband and an anarchist flag starts throwing bottles of their own pee at people, it's mostly peaceful because you see for every 10 seconds that they're actively throwing bottles they're spending like 50 seconds not throwing bottles and just yelling insults and talking about how they want to kill police so see they're they're 85 percent peaceful or whatever the ratio would be <laughs> sorry math teachers i have failed you something like that uh they're, they're mostly peaceful you see even when they're beating somebody up there's time in between punches uh, of course that's greater than the, than the amount of time that their fist is actually making contact with the person it's like at least 70 or 80 percent that's a lot of peace uh, we hear about how violent and deranged these leftists are well again most of the time when they're burning down buildings you now the buildings eventually they stop burning the, the smoldering wreckage is no longer on fire that's very peaceful there's no arson at the moment because there's no fire right this seems to be basically the logic, so-called, and, and I use that term as loosely as fucking possible, now, of some of the legacy media outlets. And of course, they're using them as useful idiots. There's a reason why more and more of these groups are trying to not report at all on these things. Like, they won't even report on the actual protests most of the time because they keep devolving as soon as the sun goes down. Like, like people, I guess, wolf out or something, and then they go crazy and they start burning shit to the ground. And then they, the legacy media, despite the fact that billions and billions in recognizable damage have been done, say, well, it's mostly peaceful. It's just a protest. It was fiery. It got a little bit rowdy. Yeah, Wendy's is gone. Target's gone. Walmart was looted. Several Ma and Pa stores are gone. Little old lady got beaten to the ground. Eh, it's mostly peaceful, though. Most of the people were only throwing rocks, not Molotov cocktails. Mostly non-flammable non uh, uh, protests. Mostly not arson-related mostly peaceful murder yeah yeah three people died but you know it could have been seven so you know uh, uh, seven minus three uh, it's it's mostly peaceful they keep doing this like fuzzy math thing like ted wheeler comes out oh my god did you see him <laughs> the mayor ted wheeler did you see him the other day on twitter when he came out and he's like well white supremacists and far-right militias are planning to come do violent things in our city on the oh, so i think they're planning for the 28th or something like that like big gathering there and, and this isn't what we stand for we disavow this violence what are you talking about dude literally every single night parts of your city are being burned to the ground cars are being attacked stores are being looted and people are being assaulted it has been happening now for what is it now fucking almost four months or some insane amount like that you you're, the riots have caused literally hundreds of millions in damage in your city alone uh, the, the state of Minnesota filed for a half a billion in disaster relief from the feds. By the way, didn't get it because they refused to actually do the policing in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region. Peaceful protests don't cause a half a billion in damage in one metro area. That's a lot of businesses, most of which, by the way, were small businesses. 
So it's not always just a big chain franchise. It's not always Wendy's that's burning to the ground. By the way, when Walmart burns to the ground, you may say, well, they got fire insurance, so it's okay, number one. And they're a big, greedy, billionaire-run corporation, so we don't care as much. It's not like it was somebody's livelihood. Yes, it was. What about all the employees that work there that now aren't working? Because there's no Walmart to fucking work at. <laughs> in a time, by the way, when we're still technically in a, at least at this point, a shallow recession, with high unemployment, although it's falling, you, things are edgy at the moment economically. You've got all these businesses in some of these major cities burning, and what we've seen historically is that if this happens for any extended period of time, Detroit, the LA riots, and so forth, the LA riots, less, uh, because they nip that in the butt on the second night. When you have pro prolonged and pronounced riots in which private individuals become the main target, it's no longer Walmart, it's suburbia. It's no longer Wendy's, it's the Ma and Pa bookstore. People begin to pick up their belongings and leave. What happens is that they tend to be the people that have more money. They're the ones that pay more taxes to the city funding fucking welfare programs. Once they leave, taxes have to rise. You have to get the money somewhere. The, 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 you've taken a 5% shaving off the population, heavily skewed towards the upper middle class and the wealthy. Anyone who is basically, they're wealthy enough to potentially move, but they're not wealthy enough to live in a, a community with private security. Basically, the people, the dentists, the lawyers, the, 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 the general practicing doctors, accountants, small business owners, some of the most productive people in, in the economy that, by the way, get screwed on taxes constantly, entrepreneurs, uh, people that own like a chain store, they own like three, four gas stations around the, the city, and they say, well, you know, I could just pocket a couple million selling this franchise, move to the middle of Texas, be safe, have a goddamn shotgun, and sit on my porch and smoke marbs all day. Why am I dealing with this situation? They sell the franchise, maybe it goes under. Maybe they just say, they just say, fuck it. They just fucking up and leave. They sell their home. The home prices plummet. People move in with less relative wealth. Even if you refill the population, you're making less revenue now. The city's bloated service sector, and, and, and it, it is no longer able to be funded. Not without raising more taxes. Thus forcing more people out. It's called a death spiral, and it happens. Seattle is staring down the barrel of a gun right now economically, looking at a situation where it could become the next Detroit. Seattle is not so big and consequential and all-important that it's not capable of going the same way as the Paris of the Americas. It probably will at this point. Portland could end up going the same way also. Certain other cities are definitely on the cusp of potentially having that problem. Chicago's had this problem for a while. Chicago's a little different because it is sort of all that. Chicago's a lot bigger than Seattle, certainly than a Minneapolis or a Portland. You have cities like, you can imagine, Atlanta. Atlanta's got these problems. You St. Louis, that general region there as well. Springfield, Missouri, St. Louis. Uh, New York City probably doesn't because it's the biggest city. It's sort of like the de facto capital of the United States. I know D.C.'s technically the capital, but people know, know more about New York City if they're from anywhere else in the world. That's the big tourist draw. People come in and occasionally slam uh, planes into buildings, but, you know, that's a different problem. You can have a death spiral in these communities, and what ends up happening is that the people that are being victimized, they just leave. They cut their losses. Eventually, you hemorrhage the middle middle class as well. Then you have even less revenue. What middle class is left in Detroit? People who are actually people, small business owners, doctors, lawyers, dentists, and stuff, they've moved to the fringes outside of the metro area of Detroit. To suburbs outside of that metro, they're, they're not that bad. They have a 30-minute commute, but they're willing to, there's a trade-off. A big trade-off. People, meanwhile, in the inner city are taxed up the ass and still get no services out of it because there's no middle class to prop things up. They got a sports stadium. That's basically it for the shitty sports teams. Now, weren't they going to spend a shit ton of money on uh, revamping that, too? You may want to keep the street lamps on. That helps to flush a little bit of the crime out of the city, at least. Maybe you could have enough cops to actually patrol every neighborhood. There are neighborhoods in that area that aren't even patrolled anymore. We see this already in Seattle. When you had Chaz, what the police do? They built concrete barriers around the zone, and then they left. They didn't do anything about it. Lawfully, they were supposed to. Taxpayers in that area were fundamentally abandoned by the city of Seattle and by the government of Washington state. They were abandoned. There's a reason why uh, Trump is trying to declare them an anarchist zone and deprive them of federal funding. I support it completely. That's about all. Peace out.